Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, this is a annual public forum of the Sunderland Community Preservation Committee. Um, and uh, um, why don't we start by um, introducing ourselves. So the com members of the committee are sitting up here. Why don't we introduce ourselves? Great, I'm Peter Jessup. And I'm Sarah Snyder, I'm chair of the committee and I represent the planning board. Helen Clark, representing um, the historical co commission. Mike Wisseman, at large. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Uncles, and also representing the conservation commission. And two other members, Megan or Quinn is gonna be new to the committee, representing the recreation commission or committee. And Tom Feinkevitz is at large. At large, also. He's at large so yeah. yeah. And Peter represents the housing, housing side of things. committee. Yeah. So he's got tons of experience in that. Um, okay. And you all, you want to introduce yourselves? Just for the, yeah. I'm Catherine Hand, I'm director of Sunderland Public Library. Nancy Pick, I'm a community pathways committee. Jeff Kravitz, town administrator. Welcome. Jim Ewing, rec coordinator. Great. Okay, um, great. So um, our agenda tonight, um, and I know there's uh, at least one applicant who's not here yet. Um, we're going to try to keep things brief because we have six applications to um, review tonight, um, and um, I'm going to we're going to go over a quick report on the status of our CPA fund, um, and um, we'll discuss the six proposals um, and then we have a little bit of housekeeping come on up Megan <laughs> we have two uh, minutes um, that Helen has provided um, and um, this is there a motion to approve these minutes have we seen those would you like to see them? Oh, do you want it? There's a couple more over here. Do you have a copy? Okay. This is, this is the one we. And then there's another one here for March 20th. That's. We're a little behind on our minute. Okay. You want the March 20th? I can make a motion to approve the meetings of March 20th. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? March 20th minutes? Almost a year ago. <laughs> I, me I remember it well. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Helen. And then um, Mar uh, November 13th, we had a meeting. We did not have quorum, but um, Helen was still kind enough to write up the notes. Do we, do we, if we didn't have quorum, do we approve the minutes or? We didn't vote on anything. Kind of we didn't vote on anything. We okay, so we don't, we don't need to. more like we notes. Have a quorum notes. Yeah. Okay. We do have a quorum tonight. We'll approve the notes from the meeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> the non meeting of November 13th. Okay. Uh, you just want to call it a non meeting? Just in case. <laughs> Informal gathering. <laughs> what would they do in Amherst? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Maybe we don't. Well, we talk about it for a lot longer, <laughs> first of all. Okay, there's a. Jennifer made a motion. Helen, you're going to have to second, I think, because. Okay, I'll were. make the second. Okay, all right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, so um, the handout that I made this, um, as as some of you know, um, the, our CPA accounting is extremely complicated. It's like a triple black diamond, um, <laughs> and we we have not really. It's not totally. Uh, um, 
it's a little, it's, it's challenging. But I made this snapshot that um, uh, it's kind of uh, simpler to understand. It's not super precise, but well, the, but it's, it's close. And basically the bottom line is we've got about $650,000 um, in the fund currently that's available for projects. Um, those have to be distributed in a certain way, but but we're we're doing very well. And we just got a um, hundred percent match, which we weren't expecting well, this year at all. So um, even we though we've done remarkably well, we've done yeah. extremely yeah. well. Towns, we're, yeah, yeah. We're right up there. We hit all the right numbers mm -hmm. and hundred and eleven thousand. Yeah. So we're yeah. doing really well. I think there's only a handful of towns that get 100% mm -hmm. yeah. this round, and we're, we're one of them. Three last time. I'm not sure. I didn't count this time, but yeah. there weren't many. Like, yeah. So, are there any questions about the CPA fund? And no. Okay. Um, I. Huh? It's a great summary. Yeah, we've got some years under our belt now. We like, and most of us, um, Jennifer, Mike, Helen, and I have been on this whole time. So we've got we've we've built up some experience. Now mm -hmm. Peter was chair of the CBC in Amherst for even longer, so he really knows. You know, it's, it's that was a while ago. That yeah. Well, we really appreciate his expertise. Um, so um, I wanted to. Um, we, we need to check in about some of the projects in process. Um, Catherine, you want to give us a really quick yeah. update on the library backyard project? Yeah, so we applied for, um, when we received a 2016, I believe, um, CPA grant from you guys to um, improve the library's backyard space. We call it the library's backyard. It's town property in between um, the library and town hall. Um, that houses the beautiful American elm tree. Um, and so our goal for the space was to make it more accessible um, and more better suited for a lot of the programs that we have outside and just general public use. Um, so we pretty much immediately, we installed electricity going outside. We installed extra lighting out there um, for some of our events that take place in the evening, which has been great. Um, and the electricity allowed us to do outdoor movies. So the library con contributed all the equipment and the licenses to do outdoor movies. So we've been doing those every summer since, which has been very fun. Um, and um, a lot of the funds were also set aside to, um, to care for the American elm tree back there um, to preserve it. Um, so this past summer, um, we um, noticed that the elm tree wasn't looking so hot. Um, it's okay, it's, it's definitely fine, but um, I thought it was worth having um, Bartlett tree experts come take a look at it. Um, and so they noticed that it was um, in desperate need of some pruning. The branches are exceptionally heavy and large, um, and it also had a crack down the middle of it that's probably been there for 10 years or so, we just never really noticed it. Um, and the crack was weeping. Um, and so um, just you know, letting water out of it, which is a sign that it's, it's not super happy. Um, so they believe that some of the construction we did was you know, caused some stress to the tree, but really the environmental conditions of the past years, we've had long droughts followed by heavy rains, and it's just that kind of fluctuation is really hard for a tree, especially a tree of that age, um, to deal with. So they recommended, number one, that we not do any more construction in the back. So no more electrical work. We're definitely not going to be installing a concrete pad back there, which was an original part of the proposal. Um, but um, so they said just you, like for five years, probably don't do anything back there, which is absolutely fine with us. We're, we did all the work we needed to do, and we're really happy about that. Um, it should also be noted that we did this work with Bartlett Tree Experts with us the whole step, every step of the way. They approved this work, said it would be fine, and it has been fine. It just, you know, the tree is a little stressed out is all. Um, but we still have funding left over, and so what we decided to do with the funding, and the only thing we really can do with the funding that's part of the original project proposal is preserve the tree. So we are doing everything we can to preserve the tree, and just this past week we've done a huge amount of work. Um, we installed additional cabling to raise the canopy up. Um, the cabling will also, in the event of limb failure, um, will keep 
the limb from falling in, it'll fall into the tree as opposed to hitting the library's children's room or town hall. It really nice <laughs> um, to not have that, to worry about that. Um, they also trimmed back the canopy a bit. It's still quite large, but at least it, they took off some of the really large, heavy branches um, because some of that was also pulling the, the trunk apart. I mean, the crack goes right down the middle of the trunk. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing they did yesterday, they actually finished it up as they installed brace rods through the trunk of the tree, which it closes up that crack and keeps it from spreading any further. Mm -hmm. um, so we now are the proud owners of the most well-preserved tree in Massachusetts <laughs> as far as our like, really good. Um, so uh, I will be submitting an invoice for that very soon. I will have that um, invoice. And then in the spring, we're just going to do some fertilizations. We're going to retest it for Dutch elm disease, which is just a natural, we don't think it has that, but it's just something you do with, with elm, American elm trees. Um, and we'll um, just do some other minor health things to it, but that's a, a pretty small cost. Pretty much we've, we've spent the bulk of the money we're going to do on preserving the tree. And we'll still have some funds left over, so it's kind of up to you guys if you would like to take those funds back and use them for another project, or if you would like to, uh, to keep them and we can continue to use them for preserving the tree as needed throughout the years, but it's, it's up to you how you want to handle that. Anybody have anything to say about that? How, how much is going to be left? Um, four th I believe about 4000 will be left when all is said and done. My opinion is it ought to come back to the CPA fund. Um, I think that's the I think that's the best avenue. If you um, if you do find that you need to do more work, you you can always come back and apply for those funds again. But I, I'm inclined to if I'm inclined to close projects out and not leave it up to the well. It's library. also the original scope of the project. Yeah, really. it is part yeah. of the original scope, yeah. but it has been it's be coming up on like five years since right, we yeah, right, started right. it. So if you guys want those funds, and I, back, I'd be inclined to close it out and let them apply for new funds if they need it. Not a punishment. It's just yeah. it, that way it doesn't stay open and you don't have to worry about are we going to overspend, underspend? If, if you get another project, bring it back. I have the opposite <laughs> inclination, which is like to you know, like having gone through the pro like nobody needs more work, you know, and mm -hmm. like since it's within the original mm -hmm. scope of the project, we have several projects that have been open for a long time. It doesn't, we don't have such a big roster that it kind of is a burden on. I, I don't. It, it's not a burden to hold those accounts open, and to and to my mind, once they like since it. It's you know the the original intent, and there's probably going to be future need. Probably not for a, a little while. Oh, okay. So I can't really say. Yeah. In the spring we've got that expected work, but after yeah. that I, I can't say yeah. much. We'll need more work. So. So anyway, that I I'm just uh, I point counter. I would defer to I would defer to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't feel like. Yeah, I move a lot. I'm in that vein too, only because this the work that's been most recently done is pretty substantial and it might be nice to have that 4,000 in case there's additional work needed for the tree and the surrounding area. So then 4,000 will go fast with pruning yeah, a tree that works. size and one more cable and it's gone. So I, don't I feel that's prefer that you keep the 4,000 for the preservation of the tree. <laughs> it's a beautiful and any other, and and any other like necessary a, things that come up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just seems like it's a well unexpected. Worth the, the investment to preserve it is a beautiful historic and natural feature of our town. So thank you guys for supporting the whole project, um, allowing the library to do a lot of more things in our backyard, but also allowing us to protect the tree while we're at it. So thank you. Thank you. I, um, I have a question about the process of that too. Like, uh, if the funds can go back to the CPC, is that something that? The way the um, town funds work, when it's like, oh, we didn't spend it, so we don't get it next year. Is it, is it in danger of like, if if the library gives the funds back to the CBC, it's like, oh, well, next year you don't get as much because that was returned. Is that ever a consideration? Next year, who doesn't get as much? You know the concept of how if you don't spend the money that the town gets, you don't get it next year. So you oh. In the roads and all. I just wondered if that was a consideration, like. Hey, Maybe she should hold on to it in case the town, the city, or the state decides that oh, well, they didn't need that much, so let's give them a little less next year. Oh no, no. Okay. Not at yeah, all. the money's given to the CPA, and they decide how to dole it out. And yeah. then that's, I get it for as long as they yeah. allow. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a quick question about the lights that got installed on the back that like 
I was I, I told you I was at a concert last year and they I had to leave because they were I was looking right into the lights. Is there any way that those? I can talk to an electrician about moving them um, or maybe switching out the bulbs. Um, yeah, or if there's I don't know yeah. if there's some way they can be. The, I don't if there's some sort of shade that can go yeah. on them or something, so they're not right in people. Because, like I said, somebody else was leaving at the same time I was because the of the lights. Yeah, I mean, I just I don't know enough about yeah. electrical stuff to, to really say, but I'm sure I can look into it um, because it, you know it's a valid concern. The the goal of those lights is to make it more enjoyable for our patrons. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks. Sure. Any four thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just the lights. Yeah. <laughs> right, there's that. And too. I think those are on the building, so those would not hurt the tree at all. Right. <laughs> um, okay. And then, um, Mike, do you um, want to tell us what's going on with the cemetery, or do or you want to wait till next time? To Let's wait till next time okay. because it's, um, Scott is really the point person. Okay. So I need to pick his brain. I know that we have, um, we had somebody line up to do the stone preservation and then there was we had an issue yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were looking we contemplate looking into somebody there's another company that also does it and so I'm not sure where we're at on that okay uh, but we have a meeting coming up and so I can give you more info okay good well our next meeting is March 11th okay. for the CPC so and I know Ben Barshevsky is going to come to that one and talk to us about what's going on with the playground okay. so if, yep. you, if you guys could give a report then that'd be great yep okay so um, on to our current proposals we have six proposals this year our biggest crop yet <laughs> Yahoo. Um, and um, and I just first want to say, no, like nothing happens in this town without um, somebody stepping forward and taking leadership. So I really want to take a moment to appreciate all the people who took, you know, gave their time to write these proposals and and put the effort into it and and put themselves forward to lead a project. Um, we we need community needs champions like that and nothing happens without them so thank you everybody who you too uh, thank you yeah yeah i'm one of them right <laughs> thank you so um so anyway let me just talk about how we're going to review these proposals so um our job uh, the cpc's job is to help the town make the best use of this awesome fund um, and to um, like make sure that the projects that are proposed, you know, use our collective wisdom to help them be the most successful projects they can be, and um, and also to make sure they're you know in compliance with the law. Um, so that's that's what we're doing. But I I see this as like a a, a working session. We've built into our our um, our schedule a whole month to develop proposals if necessary. So what what came in on um, January 30th is like a, a first round and we have, if we, we wanna like kind of go over the proposals, talk about if they need, if anything needs to be developed on them, um, we'll work with you on that. And then um, if we ask for changes or revisions, those would be due March 9th. So there's a whole month to work on the proposals. Um, and we're just, there's no decisions that are gonna be made tonight other than the ones we've already <coughs> made. But this is just like a you know, collaborative discussion. Um, so, um, uh, and I do, do well, well, we'll see how things go along. I don't know if we need to take formal votes on what we, if, if we ask for revisions or not. Uh, um, We'll, we'll figure that out. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Are there any questions so far? Okay, so the first proposal, um, Catherine actually was kind enough to actually print it out for us. <laughs> I, um, does anybody not have one? There we go. And um, there's some extras if anybody in the audience wants a hard copy. Okay. 
So, um, so what? How about? Can you give us a sort of a brief introduction to the proposal, and then um, we can just start in on discussion and questions and stuff. Sure. Okay. Um, so the library is partnering with the Sunderland Recreation Department um, to hopefully build a um, seating and storage facility. I know it doesn't sound exciting project, but it is very exciting for us. Um, so this would be located in Riverside Park, um, near the baseball and soccer fields, um, where Jim Ewan's recreation shed, storage shed already is. Um, you may have noticed that he has a bit of a lean to it, um, and it's very difficult for him to maneuver within, so replacing that is definitely a high priority um, for the recreation department and hopefully for the town. Um, it's really essential for him in order to be able to offer all the wonderful programs he does for, um, for the youth and everyone here in Sunderland. Um, but the second part of that project also is to create storage for a, um, a program that the library would like to begin offering um, of loaning kayaks. So we need a place to store the kayaks, we need places to store the, um, the, and all the safety equipment and paddles and everything that goes with it. So that um, this facility would include that as well. Um, and it would also include um, shaded seating and picnic tables within Riverside Park. Um, so there are some pictures in the back of what that would look like. Um, and so essentially, we're hoping to get three kayaks, two singles and um, one tandem, which would be stored inside benches um, in the seating facility. So you won't even- How many kayaks? Three, um, two, uh, two singles, one tandem is our goal. Um, and so they would, um, you, essentially looking at this, you would just think of it as like a really nice place to, to sit and uh, you know, enjoy your lunch or your book in the shade while you're in the park. Um, you wouldn't necessarily even know that there's kayaks within, within these benches. Um, and then there's also a, a, you know, a building attached on the other side, which is, would be the storage facility for the, uh, the recreation department items. Um, I think this would be a really nice addition to Riverside Park. Um, I know the baseball, um, Central League Baseball in particular, has said that you know there's very little shade around their their facility, and while you couldn't necessarily watch a game from this location, um, if you needed to take a break from the sun, it's a wonderful place to do that. Very close to it, you could watch half of a soccer game <laughs> from the location. Um, so it is you know kind of if there's like a brief rainstorm or something, you could go in there for shelter. Um, also, after game parties and stuff, you could, you know, definitely have a nice con area to congregate within Riverside Park. I know there's, there's several, but there's nothing really in that location that would be covered, shaded, seating, tables um, would be really nice to have. We'd also be adding a little bit of water there and outdoor electricity um, for folks if they needed to, you know, rinse off their feet after going in the river, clean off the kayaks, that sort of thing. Water would be there. Um, we'd also would have outdoor outlets, so if you want to do some work, bring your laptop or something, you could always plug it in for yourself on. It would be nice too, but it'll also be there for folks who, um, who are doing the maintenance on Riverside Park if they need to plug in a, a leaf blower or something that'll be accessible as well. Um, so yeah, so our, our goals of this project are to provide safe and usable access to storage for the recreation department, to allow the library to be able to loan kayaks by providing storage for those, but also to provide just a, a facility that actually can be used by the public and create um, needed seating and shaded seating within Riverside Park. Okay. So, thank you. Um, and so let's, let's, um, open discussion on the proposal. I love this idea. Thank you. <laughs> so I have a question. How are you going to administer it? It's, there's a lot that has gone into this. So Shootsbury Public Library has been doing this for years now successfully, which is really great. Um, last year I met with the Board of Selectmen just to kind of gauge their interest and see, like, are you even going to let me do this? Because kayaking is risky, especially on the Connecticut River. I mean, it's a, it's a risky thing for the town to be getting into, and I'm aware of that. Um, but they were very excited about it, too, which is really nice to hear. Um, and then they put me in touch with both to the town council, town's lawyers, and um, the town's insurers. And they, um, they have all approved uh, kind of draft documentation, um, safety releases, and everything that patrons would need to sign before they could borrow these things. Um, so that'll definitely be ongoing, but at least I have, they've, the town insurer has said, yes, you can do this. We have enough insurance to cover it, which is really nice to hear. Um, but 
you uh, it will only be allowed for Sunderland residents at this time. Um, so if you live in another town, unfortunately, you just only Sunderland residents can borrow the kayaks as part of the insurance. Um, hopefully, we can expand that in the future, but for now, it's just Sunderland. Um, you would need to have a library card. Um, you would need to be over the age of 18 um, or with someone over the age of 18 to do this with you. And you need to sign multiple releases saying that you will be safe, you will use the safety equipment, you know what you're doing, you're a physically able to move a kayak because there's, there's not, no one out there to help you do that. Um, and also the, um, the staff are going to receive um, safety training on um, how to tell what the like where you can look online to see what the river conditions are and how what the river conditions will be in the loan period because um, you want people to have that information available to them. This actually may not be a good time for you to to borrow the kayak, and the staff will be empowered to say it's not safe for people to, to use the kayaks at this time, and we'll we'll stop the loans at that point. And we also hope to offer um, safety um, trainings for people for patrons, um, free trainings for anyone to come learn how to safely use a kayak. Yeah, are they going to be locked up? Yes. Um, so they will be locked up. And so what the what we will actually be loaning to people is a key. So each of those benches stores one kayak, and you will check out the key to that, that storage area, as well as a key to the shared um, life vest and paddle area. Just because of the sheer number of life vests and paddles, um, we need to have life vests of all sizes for people. Um, those need to go in a separate one. So there'll be one key that gives you access to the, the life vests and paddles, and then the... Um, the kayaks themselves will be in the storage bed, so you'll get two keys. I have a couple of questions. Yes. Um, <clears throat> from the looks of it, the proposal is basically for the hard construction costs, and yes. it looks like you've gotten the architectural work and planning work donated yes. in kind, yes. and that all the supervision by your department will be in kind, yes. essentially. So you're really looking for the hard construction costs. Yes. Okay, great. Um, and then secondly, the, the rec shed that's shown on these plans is an existing building? Mm -hmm. Um, so on the plans themselves, it, so this is going to be replacing that. So the rec shed will be demolished, that's currently there, will be demolished. Okay. It's, this is going in the same location, it's just a slightly larger so because the, we're the adding So the cost of the new rec shed are included in the $73,000 yes. as well? Yes, that's everything. Okay. So that's for the a foundation and, for a new structure, all the construction. And just to comment, I would have expected this to accommodate 10 kayaks, not three. Yeah. Um, so I'm concerned that you're underestimating the, the potential demand and I would, I, I know you've spent a lot of time on these, but if each, um, I'm, I'm not sure I, I, I'm, I get it, there's, I, I'm, I'm, from the looks of these, it looks like these sheds are big enough to store two or three kayaks on top of each other. Um, they're actually not. So the way that we plan to store them is actually to have them on little dollies so people can move, you uh, know, a single person can check it out and move I it. See. So they will be actually stored on the dollies and then you yeah. just pull the doll, you pull the kayak out and it's already on the wheels and ready to go. Because it's a, it's a, okay. It's a lot of, um, there's not as much bang for your buck as I would have hoped. No. For three kayaks. Yeah. I, I kind of go, wow, I, I could imagine on a Saturday having... You know, when word gets around, 10 people going, oh, I'd love to rent a kayak for the day. And I think it's a great program. I just think it could be more popular than, than we're providing for here. So I don't know what, I don't know the land situations. I don't know zoning or setbacks. Can, no. could, could, the, could these simply be, um, I, I'd encourage you to figure out a way to store more kayaks. If we were to store more, it would be a much larger footprint in the park. And I'm not sure if we want that kind of... Okay. Thing. And we also did consider other ways to store the kayaks, including vertical, and I'm really, that really scares me. Um, so that's the most, you know, spatially, yeah. you know, con conservative way so to store So essentially you're that. making a small garage for each individual kayak. Yes, and that, that's also the pretty much one way. It's like each kayak needs to be stored in an individually locking thing right. in order to keep track of who is borrowing what. So that's, okay. that's another consideration. Um, we did have, um, so the UMass School of Architecture took yeah. on this project, and that's how we're getting the architectural designs for it. Yeah. Each, we had a class of 30 students each design their own um, okay. shed, potential shed for the kayaks, yeah. um, and this was an amalgamation of several designs, mm -hmm. but this would seem to be the most feasible. Okay. I mean, um, so the, the location, I think, might be within 200 feet of the riverfront, yeah. so there might be okay. permitting with the Conservation yeah. Commission okay. for that as well so that might might change the footprint sure. with the concrete pad if, if wood chips is an option as the base for that 
so it's less concrete. But I don't know yeah. where that would go. Wood chips would be fine for the kayak and seating area part yeah, of it, but for the actual need shed needs yeah. to have kind of concrete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and then there, that's not going to be a pervious, potential pervious area anyway because it's a structure. But the, the shade area would allow well, the right in there with the wood chips. But. I just want to harp on my point one more time. Sure. So I would encourage you to be creative about the use of that space for future planning. Um, if it could, just that, that's all. I would encourage you to say, well, you know, if we get double the, double the demand and we could really use six kayaks, that, where are the kayaks coming from? Where, um, the, we'll be fundraising to, to pay for those. The library will be paying for them. So that's part of the um, behind it as well. Yeah, I guess I would encourage you to plan for more demand sure. <laughs> okay i i have some stuff i have some comments on this proposal i um, we spent a long time talking about it in the community pathways committee and i also spent a long time talking about it with carlos um, nieto who's our landscape designer um, so and i'm um, ever since catherine first came to us with the idea of doing this i i'm very excited about it and I'm really grateful to Catherine for like she's been really persistent about it and um, um, I love the synergy between the library and the park it's just great um, and also love we do need shaded seating in the park we mm -hmm. definitely need like, the mm -hmm. storage sheds to be upgraded that all of those needs are really important um, there are a, we I see a lot of issues with this proposal um, based on my um, five years or whatever working on this land um, it's a very complicated property to work on um, there's um, environmental regulations that um, Jennifer just mentioned um, that are you know we, it, it took us a long time it was a big process to get the environmental mm -hmm. approval for the last construction project it's also a historic district, um, and we ran into um, issues last time with a uh, re requirement to do an archaeological dig before we could proceed. And that's something that the town has to um, discuss. Um, we, we had to, when we did the last construction project, we had to take out all, everything include we had a um, handicap accessible picnic table we had to take out of the plan because of the um, the digging that would be required just for that so this project with a 22 by 36 concrete slab like is a real um, the the well, there's two points about the uh, about the historical. One is the archaeological dig that Mass Historical wants us to do, and whether we need to do that before we go ahead with something like this. And the second is just because it's a historical district, the uh, historical commission. Linda Lopak is not here, but the uh, I don't know if the historical we commission discussed has discussed it. it. Yeah. So um, that's you know um, something uh, that needs to be considered. Um, there's also a conservation restriction on this land. It's it's actually it's not finalized yet, but in spirit, it's it's in because um, that's a requirement of the CPA funding and the park funding. So there's a conservation restriction that has to be worked with, um, and there's a lot of stakeholders in the park that need to be coordinated. Um, we already have are in discussion about different. The next steps, we've been in discussion about the next steps that need to happen in the park, um, including the soccer field being receding, a po uh, receded, a possible irrigation system, and also um, uh, and the improvements to the baseball and all of, all of those things that, you know, need to be, like, timed and coordinated. The, the conservation um, uh, Permits need to be coordinated between all the work that's going to be done. We last we messed up last time. We didn't coordinate with the soccer and our project, and the, that's why the soccer field hasn't been fixed yet because it, it we you know it, it didn't get coordinated properly. Um, and also um, um, because it's a public property, there are procurement laws in place, and we can't uh, it has to go out to bid. Yes. Um, and that took 
us like months last time to to go through the whole bidding process. Yeah, and that's definitely in the works, and it's something okay. I plan to do soon. It's just um, with the timing of when the application was due based on the semester and the architectural plan, so that it had a very short window. So that's why we got yeah. Saturday Construction to give us the quote. But honestly, um, it's a I think it's a great quote, but we can't have Saturday Construction actually do the project. Mm -hmm. That's a conflict of interest as Johnson Board member of the right. Board of Library Trustees. So he did that as a courtesy to us, as a usable quote that we can you know, use for other things, but we realize we will have to bid it and we do plan to do that soon. Um, yeah. Um, so, and that all has to be coordinated by the town. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, but, and also, you know, uh, there's a whole team of people in this town and um, a professional landscape architect who, you know, took several years to create a master plan for the park. And this, um, this project has not been um, coordinated and integrated with our master plan, which is kind of like a, you know, probably 20 year plan or I don't know how many. Um, and that, it, it just, because we have a plan and um, people who invested a lot of time in it, like hundreds of hours, um, it, there needs to be coordination. It needs to, it, like, it's like, I, you know, I know like, it's so great that you get this, this um, work done by UMass, but UMass, they're like, you know, they're on their own schedule and the, it's like not quite in sync with the, the town processes and uh, they, it's not, it's sort of not in context. There's a lot of contexts that need to be uh, considered. Um, that like haven't quite they didn't they didn't work with our landscape architect and they you know so it we need to I, mean, I, I did share all these plans with Carlos and I haven't re really received much feedback from him I just kind of assumed that that meant it was all right I mean I've, I've been trying to keep people informed I, you know Sunderland Youth Baseball gave me their approval they said it, they thought it was a wonderful idea um, I did ask you know I received a letter of support from the Community Pathways Committee and, and others, so. Um, um, no, but Community Pathways Committee, we declined to send a letter of support. Oh. Yeah. We so sent I, re you, I received yeah. one from Linda Lapaca. Yeah. Well, well, we, we sent a letter telling you where we are at, but we, we're not ready to support, the Community okay. Pathways Committee isn't ready to support this project. Okay. Just because we saw so many issues. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, so it's and the, what I'm what I'm talking about. It's more than getting letters of support. Like we have to sit down at a table together, and and Car I I talked to Carlos and he hadn't he didn't he hadn't seen seen the plan. I went over it with him for a while, but so, he hadn't. Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's the difficulty I see with this kind of thing as as usual because. Um, you have an applicant who is enthusiastic about a project. Right. There are a number of hurdles that need to be overcome. Um, and uh, there's going to be timing issues, and it's going to take a while to get done. Um, so what um, to, to, to ask them, I think it's always awkward to ask them to do that work without knowing that the funds could, would be approved by CPA until every single thing is in place. So what I would be inclined to do would be to um, consider it for this round and to make that award contingent upon coordination with X, Y, Z, B, D, T, and a, a, detailed, a detailed requirement of a checklist from our part that says once these things are done, then the money would be, the money would be released. Um, you can't release the money without a permit. So if, if CONCOM simply says in the end, you're... 75 feet from the riverbank, you cannot build here, then the project dies. Um, and we don't, the funds will come back to us. But I would hate to hold them up and say, hey, you gotta make sure all this stuff, I would rather give them a, a detailed checklist of the kind of things that the Pathways Committee is concerned about and others. But you know, getting a permit means that they've gotta satisfy a lot of requirements. And then the other one, the coordination with the master plan would be, you know, approval from whatever entity holds that responsibility is the planning board or whoever whoever holds that master plan. You need their approval of, of this, that kind of thing. So it, it kind of allows them to move forward, knowing knowing that you have some significant hurdles. I think you're. I think Sarah is 
really laid out for you. It's, this is not like, oh, make some plans, go dig a, dig a hole no, in the ground. I mean, I didn't, yeah. I didn't think that right. this wasn't something but I would, that I was I would, going to do I would want to encourage a group that has um, this kind of enthusiasm to pursue it with a lot more in, input from our side. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, thank you. That's a that's a good approach because I agree. Like, like I said, like we need champions of projects. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, the, the only things that happen when somebody cares, like you do, and and you know, puts their heart into it. And I really appreciate that. It's just like I guess, um, you know, I've just learned a lot from doing the construction yeah. project that we did already, mm -hmm. and. Um, like all of these things like when when we got the park grant first of all we wanted to do it for the tricentennial we that when the whole we, our whole goal was to right. get that done for the tricentennial and you know all of these we, we had to you know we couldn't there because we you know, we got knocked down here and knocked down there, and you know, it just it, we wanted it to be a birthday present for the town, but it got done a year later, and it's okay. You should it's try fine. and get it done for the quadrocentennial. <laughs> 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 um, so, and I, you know, I'm happy to work with you, uh, you know, on, you know, like all of those steps that need to be done, but I, I, I just really want to see it be. A, you know, a real community um, consens consensus on the project, and like, you know, mm -hmm. it's just really important to integrate with with and co coordinate. Yeah, and, I mean, honestly, I just didn't have the, the time between. Yeah. You know, trying to yeah. put all these pieces mm -hmm. together when the application was due, but yeah. I don't want you to get the sense that I'm. I'm just planning on going ahead and do, doing this project yeah. without considering yeah. all the other people who yeah. use the park and, you know, have a stake in there and have a lot more knowledge about these things than I do. So. Yeah. Yeah, and there's already been, I mean, there's you've already gotten a lot of inputs from the baseball and the <clears throat> other uses of the recreation area, and, and a lot of work has already gone into it, mm -hmm. too. Um, yeah, yeah it's, I'm, obviously, yeah. It's just that what we yeah. haven't, I haven't talked to Jim about it. We, Carlos and, you know, we haven't had Carlos look at the master plan. We did, you know, it's definitely within right now the 200 um, yard foot, ten, foot. foot um, line, which is, um, is a big pain in the neck. Um. <laughs> so there's just, yeah, like, I mean, there's yeah. just things, like, I don't know about the, those rules, that there's, yeah. I don't have access to the master plan, I didn't know, the, I mean, there's just all these things, that yeah. I, how so, am I supposed to really know about yeah. that ahead of time, but that's why I'm here, and that's okay. why I'm asking for okay. help with Fair this enough. <laughs> Okay, so are you willing to work with uh, me and the, um, Jeff and um, Carlos and... That was, yeah, that was my hope all along. Oh, okay, <laughs> great. <Yeah. laughs> okay, and I can... Um, for, we don't make any decisions tonight, um, yeah. um, but I can put together a checklist and um, send it around, and that's something we could. I, I really like your idea, Peter, because I, like it's only once a year that we have a chance to do this funding, and it. Um, uh, so that that's a really sensible the funding's way. Funding is always to go. contingent on getting all the final approvals, yeah. and if we yeah. give you this list of we need in the end need to have these following organizations check off on your plans and approve them, then you can do it. And the big one is really going to be getting a, a permit for it. That's you, you need to know how how that works. Well, it's nice to have reassurance that you're going to get the money if you, right. if you go. Well, I mean, yeah, that's the thing too. It's right. like I'm trying to make these plans, right. but I don't have the funds for you know. Right. So it's right. like right. there's a lot and of moving you don't pieces want to spend in this a lot whole, of extra. whole project. So yeah. I really appreciate your patience and yeah. accepting yeah. my application as right. it is. But I please know I'm more than willing to work with you to change it to right. make sure it works for everyone who uses the Super. park and work with people in town. Perfect. It's nice to have a town administrator again. I <laughs> know. <laughs> I know. We're so happy you're here, Jeff. <laughs> and I, I wanted to also add that there we have this open space and recreation plan survey out right now. Mm -hmm. We've been getting we're almost at a 400 have come back, which what? is way more than we got wow. from the last one. And a lot of them say uh, more ways to use the river. You know. Some even say get some get some kayaks and 
canoes out there to borrow. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and so there's a lot of support and, and it's been a priority with the park and the open space and recreation mm-hmm. plan to really use the river more and this would be a way to great you know, maybe not with three but I do I do also see that the library is not in the canoe and kayak business so to make them be the primary source of canoes and kayaks I think is not our goal maybe but they could be the person that uh, someone with a kayak can go to and borrow for their friend that wants to go with them and then yeah. so and that's the goal too is way of getting more people out yeah. there because so. we can't we don't have the capacity really to be like a, a rental you know mm-hmm. station which i think is what a lot of people would like is like mm-hmm. a, a organization to actually rent the kayaks and have you know have a trailer and everything mm-hmm. to be able to put them on your car and take it wherever and we we can't do right. that especially with the, the laws of, of the town and mm-hmm. you know working with town insurers but keeping it small mm-hmm. for the start is probably mm-hmm. just in our best interest and in making sure we can handle that and then if we need to expand Mm-hmm. And, and just in our discussions, um, mm-hmm. it, it made sense the library's open six days a week right. or five days a week. Yeah. Five days a week. Um, there's really, uh, other than, well, not even this building, this building's only open four, uh, three and a half days a week. So there's where do you go right. to, you know, check out the kayaks? Right. And it made sense that it be at the library because they are open and they're proximate. Um, and um, you know, currently, be a rec- book? currently the rec coordinator gets paid for twelve hours a week. So, um, <laughs> and, 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 and today I've already been off to Berkshire East for three and a half hours, and I'm here tonight, and I'll be in the gym all day on Saturday. So I think the twelve hours will be gone. So, but it's you know, it just made sense that that's at this point to try to do this. And, and I think there's probably the possibility as we think about the project, and I'm speaking out of turn, Catherine, but um, I think, you know, to make it so that you could add two or three of the storage um, silos, benches, if you will, um, I don't think that would be that difficult, perhaps, to consider doing. It would make the footprint a bit larger, and that deals with all those other concerns and issues. Right. Right that Sarah mentioned, but um, I, I think that starting off small and, and seeing how it goes and the possibility might be that we could add three storage benches um, uh, without too much difficulty um, you know, later on, assuming that we plan for that ahead of time as a part of going through this process. Yeah, and even you know, in the future, if it's something we do want to expand on, maybe those benches could be at another location in Riverside Park. They don't need to be right there. They wouldn't need to have the electricity, the water, the concrete pad, and that's a lot. I mean, that's really the, where the cost of this project comes in, is really the, the full construction of a, a storage facility. Mm-hmm. So okay. one other thing, I, I always ask myself, for every proposal, does this fall under the CPA guidelines, you know, from a, a state point of view? and I, I'm assuming we, we have no questions about what it does. It's in the recreation category, it's mm-hmm. for a, it's gonna benefit the whole town, it's on public land, there's no privatization, it's it, it's good, right? I mean, yeah, and it's a, all you guys are paying for is, is the permanent structure. I know that's a yeah, yeah. thing, I know from the backyard project, that anything that moves cannot be included, right. so the kayaks, that's why the library will be paying right. for the kayaks or so. Right. So, you know, just, I'm good with it. I would, I would encourage, I would encourage you guys to put your heads together yep. and have a good sit down. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a wealth of knowledge sitting right here. And yeah. Good. Um, okay. Does everybody feel in agreement about that approach? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. Um, and um, okay. Anything else on this proposal? Um, I'm going to skip quickly in the, um, to a related proposal because another proposal that we have is from the town of Sunderland for planning the next phase of Riverside Park. Um, and that's to, so we have the funds to pay Carlos to, to put everything into the master plan, coordinate all the different needs mm-hmm. and the schedule, the environmental concerns, and um, put together everything we need to pr- 
uh, apply for funding. Mm -hmm. um, and that, <laughs> sorry, I forget, uh, that was, um, oh, and the yeah. other thing that's included in that is to design the bathroom building, because in mm -hmm. our master plan, which I don't have up here, we had a, a bathroom building with covered seating and storage for the, you know, we already had that in the plan, mm -hmm. so, um, um, but working on the building is going to cost a little more. So that proposal is for um, $22,000. dollars 22 or so. $22,060. Um, does anybody, and so that would be um, just for the, just, just for the landscape design and getting ready, getting everything, all of this stuff together. Does anybody have any questions about that proposal? Um, this is coming from the town? Jeff, is, yeah. that, is that correct? From out of your office? And full where, dis where is Riverside full, Park? Full disclosure, <laughs> full disclosure, I wrote the proposal. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I wrote the proposal for the town, um, but the reason it's uh, the last the last project came from Community Pathways Committee, mm -hmm. but um, I suggested that this should be from the town because mm -hmm. we need like a neutral party mm -hmm. to coordinate all of the different yeah. stakeholders. Yeah. It's got to involve the town, and and mm -hmm. and our previous town administrator ended up. Um, having to be the one to administer yeah. the whole project. So um, that's why it's coming from the town. Um, 22060. So what, what is additional design needs beyond the master plan? So um, we have a master plan, but now we have um, real live construction. Um, and so um, and also, it, things have changed since we did the master plan. Now we have real life construction and, and, and more experience with the, the actual realities of things. And um, uh, we have additional um, requests and needs, like um, um, that we're talking about needing irrigation for the soccer field. That wasn't in the master plan. We're talking about, um, it's like getting into all the all the nitty gritty details about implementing irrigation. Then the, the baseball, Sunderland Youth Baseball wants to make um, um, upgrades to their facilities. That's not in our master plan, the, those, those kinds of details. And the kayak storage, what, you know, we didn't know there was gonna be a kayak lending program <laughs> when we started the master plan. So all of those, mm -hmm. there's all of this new information and, um, um, I mean, definitely we've got to start, but it's got to be um, edited, you know, and, and um, the budget has to be edited and the you know, plans have to be edited, yeah. So was this proposed amount from Carlos's office? From yeah. Richard Design Group? They, yeah. They gave you a proposal, $22,060. Right. Yeah. And, um, okay. And does this... Need and he always works more than right. what he gets paid right. for. Does this <laughs> does this need to be put out to bid if it's more than no 10, under thirty under thirty? Yeah, doesn't have to go. Do we run the same issue with the bathroom as we're running into with the mm. absolutely with, with the proximity to the river and all? Well, um, it the where yeah. it's on the master plan is beyond the t two hundred oh, foot okay. line, but but. Um, uh, is, there is there one out there? There's a bathroom out there already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, it where, is it where we talked about originally? I mean, there's really no room for it there anymore. So with all of that, that's what I mean. See, it's mm -hmm. new, things are, have changed. <laughs> In the water I was talking about, we were hoping to connect into the bathroom where it is, so that will, whether or not we have water at the, you know, will depend right. on where the bathroom is located. Yeah, that's why all of this has to go. Right. Well, this, this needs to occur yeah. before this occurs, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. This, one, right. This, is easy, this is easy for me to approve. I mean, this, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. this is a great idea. And, it makes perfect sense, and it, it's kind of a precursor to let me get uh -huh. those guys yeah, going. Absolutely, yep. Anybody? But it's okay. designing for a bathroom in a different place, or is it? Would it be? I don't know. Maybe combining these together. It, yeah, maybe they'll end up being. Com I don't know. We, the, we. That's what we have to hash it all out. That's what they want. Mm -hmm. Well, originally it was going to be between the baseball field and the soccer field. Up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and now there's really now that. 
in reality, we have the pathway coming through, mm -hmm. um, and and you see where the the uh, the addition of the bullpen area for baseball because that had to be moved because of the pathway, um, and where the soccer field comes in, um, there really isn't enough room to put it there. It was it, it would have been a, a, a good spot for it. Um, but there really isn't the room for it, and I'm not sure if there ever really was. Um, it was like, yeah, that'd be a great place for it when we were talking in general terms. <laughs> right. um, um, now, we're <laughs> now, now we've had some construction, right? <laughs> and um, and and in some ways, um, where the bathrooms are is a is a good location. The other one might have been a little bit better, but it's a good location, and where the recreation shed is, is a good location, um, recognizing that the baseball league also has their shed down there as well. Um, so um, this is probably a good location, given the geography of the space now. And Jim, are you willing to kind of Get, sit down at the table with us and, and hash oh, all no, that I out? Would, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Great. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Quick question. I, as I recall, the, the bathroom was kind of terrifyingly expensive. It was like yeah. $350,000 yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So with that in mind, um, is the goal then that we would maybe apply for a second park grant? Yes. Is, so that's the idea. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of preparation for that next phase. Exactly. Great. Yeah, that's why we have to like kind of take time to get all our ducks in a row and like get a a solid plan and get get everything synced up so, you know. Go uh, back to the state and ask for funding. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're in good position. We have very good we get a lot of points <laughs> <laughs> on their the their point system and you know, we're uh, it, you know. While we're on that, oh. I know it's not the actual project yet, but did did Sherry get the soccer fields on the capital plan to have There's that? Money. There There's was twelve thousand that already already got appropriated. Set aside, and we couldn't. We need do more. <laughs> we couldn't do anything with it um, until after this project was finished. Um, right. There was those constraints of timing, um, and the question. The big question is whether or not to think about irrigating it. The baseball field has irrigation. Um, tying into that irrigation would not be such a big issue, but um, there's, you know, we have to talk with the water district, and, um, you know, there, there's, again, that process of having to talk to a variety of different people to reseed the, the soccer field would not be such a big, big deal. Um, and 12,000 wouldn't pay for the irrigation. That wasn't part right. of the original. Mm -hmm. It might pay for part of it, but it would not pay for all of it. Um, if we wanted to go that route, um, but in order to really have a decent field, um, it probably is what we need to do, given that the, the quality of uh, soil and everything that's there and what we would need to do. Um, but we're also, hopefully going to be looking at other funding because Frontier uses that field as well as the soccer field at the elementary school and currently the town gets no money from Frontier other than that they give me nets for the goals every couple of years <laughs> and corner flags and all the paint to paint lines which is not insignificant um, good soccer nets um, go for five or six hundred bucks and um, they give us Probably, let's see, they give us about $350 worth of paint every year for the lines and, you know, the corner flag. So it's not that we don't get anything, but Waitley, as an example, gets thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah so that's been a long-standing thorn in uh, our side that hopefully we can address this time around. Any other questions about the um, the Riverside Park design proposal. Any requests for 
revisions on that. Yeah, Inky? Sorry, are there ways to tie in um, irrigate, like more sustainable irrigation like ideas by using rain barrels and siphoning water towards the field from like the library and the roof of the city hall? Or? I think that that's something that um, Carlos, we, we could, it, that would be part of the design process. To and there's a couple plants you can plant that would have longer roots that can retain more water and keep the soil a little wider. That'd be great, you can come to the meetings. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. So we're are we good? We're good on that proposal. For, okay. Um, now um, next is uh, um, the Mount Toby drinking water uh, proposal. Nancy, are you gonna drinking water preservation conservation? I, I think you asked me to do that. Oh, you're gonna do it, Jennifer? <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, Nancy. <laughs> sorry. Here in the headlights. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, okay, if I, I'll, I'm, I'm going go by memory. I, I, I have the right folder on the way here. Uh -huh. I'm so sorry, Nancy. I, I was looking at her because she's the guiding spirit of this proposal. She's the champion who like nudged it along to this point, and and so. But Jennifer's gonna. Yeah. So this it's the drinking water Mount Toby drinking water protection plan. The grant is to combine with the drinking water protection grant with the State Department of Environmental Protection has a grant project or process and it's a 50% match with the town so if, if they do approve it it's 40 acres on Cross Mountain Road on each side of Cross Mountain Road within the zone two and three of the wellhead for one of the main sources of the drinking water for people in town who are on the town drinking water and the the 64,500 I think is what the oh, CPA I, part would be 64,000 you asked for 64,500 no uh, no oh, 64,000 64, even, even. 64,000 even is the 500 for you there's like okay. All right, someone else is going to the water district is probably going to do 61,500 uh -huh, okay. and the grand total is 311,900. So I if the DP grant covers half of it, then the conservation trust is prepared to do 20,000. Um, the water district and then the CPA request is the, another part and then Kestrel Trust, Kestrel Land Trust has a lot of legal fees and their time and all the part of all the parts that they're gonna some is in kind and then twenty thousand you have it in front of you? Mm -hmm. Twenty thousand five hundred. Twenty thousand five hundred <laughs> is Kestrel Trust actual piece that they're yeah. contributing. So I did put the timeline in the challenge of the like the challenge of this project is like all these pieces have to come together or it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, so the grant has to come through, CPA has to kick in, um, the water district votes act after town meeting when they actually approve that amount. Um, so all these pieces. So is this another contingent approval by our? <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, we don't have to do a contingency because I just I think it's not. Yeah, till till they get to closing. So, I mean, you have a willing seller. I didn't I didn't read all the details. So the, the the way the grant process works is that this land would then be owned by the water district. Who owns it currently? Uh, private landowner. Right, and you have an agreement with the private landowner. Yeah, and right? you have a willing one. Has one private landowner. One private landowner. Willing seller. Whole, yeah. They're, and they have a purchase and sale agreement. Purchase and sale agreement with Kestrel Land Trust. They would okay, be the intermediate yeah, yeah. for the um, water district would get it with the grant money and every all the other sources. And there's been an appraisal. Yes. And, and that's the three hundred eleven nine hundred. It's within the appraised amount. No more than that. Okay. Great. Well, the three hundred eleven is the project cost. The appraisal was two two ninety. Two ninety. Yeah. But the actual purchase cost of the land probably can't exceed the appraisal, right? Right. right. So right. the rest is soft costs and legal fees and yep. stuff. So right. how big a parcel is it? Forty acres. Forty. So this is um, for those of you who haven't seen the maps. It's it's right at the uh, it's it's right at the base of Mount Toby, like mm -hmm. where 
where Mount Toby meets the village of Sunderland. Yep. And the town sewer and water goes right up to that line. And they had this property on the market as mm -hmm. developable, mm -hmm. like to put a subdivision there. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and um, in the, the CONCOM's proposal lays out all of the reasons why this land is so critical to our drinking water supply and to mm -hmm. wildlife and to, um, um, and, but, but by by conserving the land that's at the base there, it it's very it's really critical because then we like it it gives us a big leg up in conserving yeah. everything above it um, because the more the more you get the bottom, the harder it is for anybody to develop higher up. Yeah, kind of a partial roadblock. Yeah. 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 Um, and Jennifer, the other the other funds are essentially all approved by the other agencies. Conservation Trust Conservation Commission voted for the Conservation Trust piece. Kestrel Trust is on their fully in. So this is, would be um, the last piece. But the Water District doesn't officially vote till after. Right. Our but, town but, meeting. but but CPA oh, money would be the last piece going in that that would be needed. Yeah. Well, the grant is we don't know the grant yet either. The, we're oh. having a site visit with the DEP people next week. And yep. I don't think the award is announced till March something. Right. So, so we would know well, you before know, town meeting. Before town obviously, meeting. you don't get to spend the CPA monies unless you get all the rest of them. But you know, right. yeah. What if what if you don't get the water district grant? Water. Wait. So there is. I I think <laughs> Kestrel is thinking of a, of oh, a for a just, land grant. Uh huh. That's so right. another, another grant. An, another option. state grant option. Yeah. But this is the more obvious choice because yeah. the land is contiguous to our water district land and close to the wellhead. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And because Mount Toby is a priority for the state in terms of its preservation yeah. of endangered species and um, trying to, you know, trying to save that mountain for the many, for the very bio, the biodiverse. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, species that are there. Yeah. That wasn't very articulate. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Right? Yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> I I want to say from the um, our the our CPC perspective, this is um, a really great project because a um, they they put together a package of funding, and you know we love to <laughs> see CPA funds leveraged right. and like combined Absolutely. with other state funds. It's a great way to yeah. use them, and so this yeah. this is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, now I'm spacing out on the other thing I had to say. Well, was the first time we've used our funds for protecting land. Oh, that's Toby. that's the other thing. Yeah, so first we also, if you look back at this sheet. Um, open space is the lowest, has, is the, we spent the least amount of money on open space of all the different categories, but we haven't even spent that much because some of it's sitting, how much of the 110 have, so has been spent? I don't know we, exactly what fed into the 135, but the, there's 30,000 that went into the Conservation Trust for APR per, per Has right. that been spent? No. Right, and so there's 80,000 went in, and that is only 31,500 is going to come out of that for the gun APR. Yeah, so almost 80,000 of that 135 hasn't been spent even. It's just sitting and uh, waiting for a project. So mm -hmm. we, we haven't even met our yet our 10, we haven't even spent 10% and we we're required to. So we, we need open but 10 space. 10% is you have to, you have to. The ten percent requirement yeah. is to budget, right? Yeah. Not spend. We don't right. have. To, I mean, open That's space correct. is going to be one of those things where you build up. Oh, so okay. You, you know, yeah. we can't buy. We can't buy this property yeah. because we don't have two hundred and forty, two hundred ninety thousand right. sitting right. there. And yeah. there might be a property that comes up where we want okay. to buy it outright. Yeah. yeah. And we don't have that amount yet. So, so we'll but I'm just these, these. This funding is restricted for APR anyway. So these are just. But if, effectively, Jennifer, you could take this sixty-four thousand dollars out of your currently allocated funds. No, because that's mm -hmm. these for are APR. APR for APR, APR. only. Uh, what's in what's APR. in the what's already been allocated was for APR purchases right. only. It yep. didn't go into a general fund for open space. No, it went to the conservation trust with the APR. Oh, okay. It didn't just go into a pot for open space. Right. No. Okay. No. So you, you could, so you can't use that. Right. So I, I'm just going to say just to, and, and I hear you, it needs to build up. 
And we've been at this since 2012, and nothing's come up until the, well, there was the gun property, that just mm -hmm. only two properties mm -hmm. have come up that we've had the. No, we were able to use state money or federal money for the matches instead of the town money. So. Yeah, so I'm just saying it's, mm -hmm. we, we want to, that we, we're looking for open space mm -hmm. projects. I mean, it's good to, it's good to. This one will be easy. Yeah. I think. Yeah, to me it's a no-brainer. Me too. Anybody no, else? I don't have many brains, so. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any any questions, comments on this proposal? Any revisions requested? Okay, good. All right. Next, Inky. Hi. Um, and you were you weren't here when um, when. Um, we did our introduction, so um, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, my name's Ian Lippincott. I go by Inky. Um, I recently, my family and I recently moved here in July, so I'm relatively new. I joined the Pathways Committee and kind of got, a little, got my feet wet a little bit with some of the processes here. And I used to be on the ComCom in Medford, outside of Boston, where we moved from. So I'm a little, I'm like really interested in conservation. And, and I've been doing, um, environmental advocacy in many different forms. Uh, I come from a design and, and signage and artist kind of background, so I, over the years, have been doing different meetings, but in the last few years of advocacy and, and partnering with schools out in Somerville and the Boston area, and now here in Holyoke, um, I found that my calling seems to be like signage and, and PSA is about like what's going on right now. And usually for the more colorful, illustrated style, like grabbing people's attention. And it tends to be more children oriented, mm. so like start there and it's better to get them when they're young too and kind of open their eyes and show them like how they can participate and become part of this uh, solution oriented process of fighting climate change. Um, I guess so I'm applying for, I jumped in at the last minute here too. So I understand my grant has got holes in it. I don't even have a location uh, guaranteed or picked out. I've got a couple ideas, and one of them was the elementary school, and I barked up their tree and talked to uh, Principal Varshevsky, um, and he informed me that they actually have a pollinator, they have a butterfly garden, and they already have a, that nice special garden there. Um, so he was excited to hear my ideas and wants to talk about me doing signage there for some other stuff, but was like, we don't need this right now, so try and, elsewhere. And just so a, a couple of people up here didn't, might not have read your proposal, so just... The, sure. okay, it's, so, yeah. okay, it's, so it's a simple, it's an 8 by 4 um, raised bed, um, pollinator garden is just a, uh, uh, for me it's an organic uh, garden bed with uh, native species of perennial flowers, herbs, plants, vegetables uh, that grow in this region naturally that can replenish the food chain for the pollinators, the birds, the bats, the bees, and all the bugs and living creatures in between. Um, uh, but I didn't stop there because yes, gardens are great, do all that stuff, lovely, uh, but people drive by it, walk by it, whatever. What's that? I don't know. Um, so I, I want to focus on making small um, handmade signage um, that kind of explains the different processes in the garden. Um, and I learned this from several years ago doing a guided tour with the schools, the elementary and grammar schools in Somerville, where I partnered with Groundwork Somerville and the Green City Growers, um, where they were like, we have all these engaged students, but they don't know like what to do with these. They don't know why it's important to let plants die where they are and why there's a pile of dead stuff and what compost is and why, what is irrigation, what is our water table, and where does it all come from. So, a lot of big scientific topics that kind of have to be boiled down to like simple one or two bullet points. And I took a lot of that energy and, I, and I've kept it and I want to keep delivering that and making fun guided tour kind of signage stuff that's kind of like, oh, this, this plant does this. It's also friends with this plant. These two plants together create a split space for these bugs to be here, which increases the chance that you'll see this one bird. Um, and <coughs> also explain compost and explain um, simple drip irrigation and, and little rain catching barrels and stuff that I uh, have been doing on my own. And so I'm just asking for like the lowest possible uh, grant that's here uh, to do this <laughs> simple thing that I'm hoping to package as a as a, a, an idea that can be done again and again and again that anyone can do, um, and just kind of go out there and show people how how easy it is to do this on the cheap. Um, and so. 
Yeah, so again, it's a raised bed, um, a little bit of landscaping fabric underneath of it, um, some galvanized half-inch um, grating below that to keep um, boring animals from going under the bed. Um, then probably the bulk of the expense is in the soil, or I, I maybe I haven't found enough uh, local um, potential for getting like soil donated or whatever, but I found that soil just doesn't never goes far enough, and so that's where a lot of money would go to. Um, I've broken it all down in my budget, but um, it's a lot of on the soil and in the, in the amendments that I've learned to make super soil with, where I, I, I create a living soil so that it can sustain for years and years without like having to be fed and fertilize every year. Um, and I would, I would set this up in a way where um, the information is there visually for people to look at and numbers and, and facts and stuff are there. And I would maybe even leave a bucket with scoops and be like, you know, and a sign up sheet and be like, this is, so and so did it this week. And, I'll, and it's, hopefully it's in an area that I'll be biking by anyway and I can maintain it and manage it. But I would love to be able to pass the torch to everyone and just have these things pop up everywhere. So I've, I think I've explained it. Yeah, that's good. Let, let, why don't we just open discussion and we can just... And, and, mm -hmm. oh. I need a location. That's, the, that's where I'm at. Yeah, so, so that was my first question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so the select board, we're going to walk with you. Thank you. Yes, I did run this by the select board and they were excited and said that they would go walk with me. Originally thinking it was going to be at Sadowski uh, Park or that place that's near you. Yeah, and then there's another piece of town land on North Silver and Park Road corner. North mm -hmm. Silver and Park Road? Yeah. yeah. I was trying to look for, yeah, I forgot the second cross street. Yeah, it's like a sliver. I'm fine with that. I mean, like literally eight by four. It can be almost on the side of the road. Somewhere. Eight feet by four feet. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big piece. <laughs> um, but yeah, I maybe I should hit up the, the select board again and, and ask them more recommendations. Another idea that came up, I think, in the Pathways Committee was there might be some land near and around the the fire and police training area. Um, yeah, there was going to be a solar installation mm -hmm. there, and then that and then got that still yeah, Is that really dead, or is that still possible? We haven't heard yeah. anything. It all got approved, and then EverSource like pulled the plug on us. Yeah, because oh. they were doing their own, but they're done with their own now. So oh, so put gardens in there quick before they change their mind. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, I've been disinclined to approve projects that don't have a site. Right. Secured. Um, <laughs> however, in this case, and I would encourage you. I would encourage you to, to keep at that. Yeah. Well, we um, have a month. We have a month. Right. I would encourage you to keep at that. <laughs> and by by the other token, if this is is such a small amount and has the you know in my mind has the potential to be a great educational piece, that I'd probably approve it and let you go find a site. Um, you did approach the grammar school. I did, yes. Yeah. I couldn't uh, find you an 8 by 10 spot there to put this, which is I, where all I, the kids I, are, and you can get something out of it. I admit, I, I approached them like January 29th. <laughs> like, hey, here's a, here's a letter for you to sign that I wrote for you. Um, and hi, I'm, I'm Inky, and uh, yeah. hey, is it okay if I, uh, someone said that it sounded like you're the schoolyard, the back area of the elementary yeah. school would be a good spot. And, um, You'll find something. I was a little forward with it, so they were like, who, what? Let's get on the phone. And, and I got to meet Ben Shrip. Shrip. Well, it seems like if you want to be an educational tool, it seems like being near a school might be a useful yeah, place I to be. Perfect. You know, instead of a random location yeah, up on like, North Silver yeah, Lane, or yeah. you know, people are going to say, what the hell is this? So, <laughs> you know, if you want to be educational, I would be willing to go over and talk to Ben myself, too. And they ought to be able to find you an 8 by 10 piece. You can get a slight reduction in the lawn. Four, four by eight. eight, eight by four. four. Or four, whatever it is. Yeah, and oh, four by eight. Interest, anyway. Something that we'd love to have near the library too. If, the, if yeah. for some reason the school doesn't work, I mean, yeah. we've got a lot of shade back there, so it may not be mm -hmm. ideal. Maybe it should become part of the master plan. All right, yeah. it could hey, be. I'll, yeah, exactly. We'll Casters in the bottom of it, we can move it from place to place. Oh, that's cool. Sure cool. What's up? <laughs> With a four by eight sign that says your CPA dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we're looking for, <laughs> which will only cost about nine hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> you know, I have a feeling that there is room at the school. I just need to del more delicately approach it, and and possibly there's even some of this. I've seen butterfly gardens in the past where it's like something it just went it just went to weeds, and it's like all right, well. If that's what you got, like, let me come in there and work with it. And, like, I can work with anything. Um, I think it's worth approaching the school again. Yeah. Okay. They have room there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They certainly have yeah, room. I know that Ben mentioned several times the um, the 2021 uh, 
playground project, I think, is, is really occupying his mind. And, and so it seemed like he was kind of just, that's in the forefront. He can't really... Well, a four by ten, though. And four by yeah. ten is nothing. Can, to yeah. <laughs> well, and again, I want this to be a, a pilot that takes flight and yeah. goes to yeah, know, yeah. Bigger, sure. you know, yeah. Let's do ten of them next year, like. Kind of, mm -hmm. um, but again, yeah, I should probably not be like on the side of off the side of the road somewhere where people don't walk or hide. No, right, right. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. You want to public? Yeah. Um, so work on your approach, and, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I guess I would I would say, you know, that we have a month. <laughs> right. If you can um, get yourself connected more to the um, uh, school and see if there's some way and, and then and get a location um, that would, and revise your proposal um, for next, we can, we can meet with you March, uh, March 11th and take it up again. Any, what about CONCOM? Does CONCOM have any comments about? No, we hit, we voted on a support letter. Oh yeah, I have a letter from you guys, thank you. <coughs> okay. I just, uh, last minute I changed the, uh, from the school to just like an underutilized TBD. public space within the Sunderland. <laughs> you changed their letter? <laughs> 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 That's a good start. We took away the fence area and the specific location. We figured somewhere at the school would work. Oh, okay, so you were still on board. At the school, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you, can you talk to the school too? Yeah. yeah. She's connected. She, I think she was yeah, seen in that awkward that. email of mine that was like, hey, how's it going? And yeah. you have to sign this? And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> 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 I bet you the Hitchcock Center also takes kids from Sunderland in their <laughs> programs, and they might have a contact to help you a little bit with that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna hit them all. He's. I work at the Hitchcock Center. Too. Oh right. He's, he works at the Hitchcock Center. Oh great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you guys. I'm sure you guys have <laughs> Okay, so Jennifer. So, <laughs> yeah. Avail yourself of Jennifer, <laughs> and uh, okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Oh wait, I just have one question. Why do you need a raised bed when we have like the world's best uh, <laughs> growing best. soil here? Um, I guess I'm so used to doing it in the city that we could never trust the soil there and that would cut down on the soil costs, but also, yes, the soil in Sunderland is supposed to be great. I just, I still have to get tested it if we're doing great. food here. We've got right? some farmers here who can we used to We used to farm that years ago before <laughs> the school was there and that's great, that's great land. So, would I be okay putting the fences up there and, and just saying, yeah, and tomatoes are growing out of there and we're not, we don't have to worry about there possibly being heavy metals or anything in the soil at all. Lovely. No, as long as it gave you, it's off to the sides, it's wet, but kind of in the middle there, you'll have to negotiate for your location. <laughs> okay. That could dramatically change the cost of this. Maybe I could build two for the, I could re and then this, if it is in that location, I have the validation that like the soil. Yeah. So work with work with Jennifer. I'll be happy to talk to Ben too. Soils, soils are safe. Yeah. Okay. I'm so not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sunderland. <laughs> hey, good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Best you. soil in the world. <laughs> water in our opinion. Best <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> water in the valley. <laughs> we, do water. we do have the best water. Um, okay, we're getting there. Um, we have two more to go, and um, and if, and if anybody wants to leave, they can. If you if you're done, the two more are the design of the pathway system and the and this a little one a sort of accounting item. Okay, Nancy, um, are you gonna? I will be very brief because okay. it's already been a long evening. Yeah, but um, when did we create the pathways? Committee. Was that like 2013 or 14 or something? It was 2013. Like 2013. And one of our great visions was that we would have this beautiful map, you know, that would allow everybody in town to know how everything connected, you know, where you could hike and where you could cycle. And, you know, um, it turned out to be really difficult together. Like, it sounds easy, but it's really complicated. Um, and we sort of have made some steps along the way. I mean, Jennifer has been working with UMass to get like GIS maps of Mount Toby and to get updated trail maps. And, you know, we, we, have, our, we have more pathways than we've ever had in town. Um, so, and more sidewalks, and you know, the whole system is starting to be developed. 
but we haven't really been able, um, because we haven't had a professional come in to um, put together the map that we really need. So this proposal is to um, hire Carlos, who is a serious mountain biker and who knows a lot of those trails, um, to, to help us sort of, you know, coordinate all the information that's out there. So, you know, we need those GIS maps and we need to find out, you know, what students have been putting together at UMass and, you know, we need to know exactly where the trails on Mount Toby go through private land and where they're public. You know, all of that stuff takes like real time and effort to figure out. And I think if we were to um, have that map in hand, then again, it's sort of, you know, like having that master plan updated. It's like, okay, now, now we know what we have. You know, now we can go out and we can hire graphic designers to, um, you know, make maps, or maybe people are just on their phones, and so it's you know an app. It's the Sunderland Trail Map app. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's you know it's exciting to think about the future, but we've never really been able to get there without this intermediate step, um, right? Yeah, and I'm just going to add a couple other things. This pro this process, this design process, would include it a whole concept for what our town trail system is including how especially how we connect with Mount Toby because right now there's so many people in town who've never been on Mount Toby and the 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 gateways that um, the one up on on the north end at Reservation Road is maintained by UMass and that that's all but the the gateways down here are, you just have to kind of be in the know to know where to go. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to be looking at the entrances, the gateways to Mount Toby, working with the water district on the one at the um, reservoir, and, and coming up with a plan for, like, does anything need to happen with parking? Does anything need to happen with, do we want kiosks? Do we want, how do we, do we want to have signage from town that guide people to Mount Toby? How do we want to, like, really, connect sort of in the geographic consciousness of the town like kind of integrate mount toby because sort of right now it's like two two separate places and so it's 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 about kind of conceptually connecting the town we we've got we're got connected to the river now and now it's like to do the same thing in terms of connecting to the mountain and getting getting us um all plugged in. And one last thing I want to add is that the Volunteer Firemen's Association, um, um, I went and met with them about this, and they're very eager to have a, um, a system, a numbering system up on the mountain for their rescue efforts. Because right now when somebody gets lost up there or hurt up there and they call in and they say, where are you? Mm -hmm. um, people have it's very hard for people to say where they are and they go riding around on their i don't know how they like like they're like searching all over the mountain for someone and what they would like to have is a um an intersection numbering system where they the numbers get on the map and then the uh, the number the signs get put up at the intersections on the mountain so then somebody is lost all they have to do is get to an intersection and they can say i'm at 31 and they can just be there like that um, so that would be part of this process as well, um, the whole public safety element. And this is in the open space recreation. Recreation. We're not going to we're not going to acquire or create new space. We're going to just simply support the existing. Yeah. Would 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 it fall under open? I mean, is there something we can do in the open space category? We have to. Have to acquire, or but even oh, okay. I think even maybe. in the recreation category, we're not going to acquire. Land no, it or would be a rehabilitating or support or re rehabilitating or preserve and support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now this this proposal references the previous conceptual yeah. plan of two ten thousand. So can you remind me that ten thousand? Yeah. And how how this is different than that. So if you look at your um, <laughs> your history of in CPA, 2014. in 2014, the Community Pathways Committee got um, $10,000 for concept, concept and design studies. 5000 of that was used for the master plan of Riverside Park. 5000 remains. 
So what we're asking for, we're gonna, we want to use that for this, and we need an additional six thousand something. Um, that was a more gen. This was meant to be more general. Whenever we need conceptual planning, I'm such a concrete person, so I always yeah. have questions about design and mm -hmm. spending money on yeah. planning and design. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was more general. When we need it, here it is. And now this one's more specific with a. Are you wondering why it's more? No, it's not it's different. Not, no, it's, it's how it's different. It's 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 the same thing. But then with more detail, a lot more detail. From, a, from an accounting point of view, just so we're clear, yeah. we ought to um, return $5,000 to the CPA fund oh. and approve a new $11,600 oh, really? appropriation. Yeah. That way you, you, you have authorization to spend that money oh, rather okay. than, then it's clear to the town that in fact we've re we reduced that and then now we're at, we're at, you know, the numbers come out the same, but then when it gets approved by town, it's... Clear, Clearer. Clear oh, okay. okay. Clarify. Okay, good idea. <coughs> See? See what I said in there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's just sort of an accounting thing. Because the real, the, real, the real request is for $11,000. Because right. there's 5000 on the spend, another 6000 that we're spending now. So. And the 5000 really was tied to the, to the right. park, not to the Right, but, but this is a, essentially a new proposal. So we'll just have to tell people at town meeting yeah. though, that we're returning right, 5000 exactly. Because yeah, like, they're yeah, not thinking that It doesn't affect the coming. bottom line. Okay. All right, that's a good idea. So cool. Does everybody want us to do that? Make the proposal for 11? Return 5,000. And return the so that makes sense. 20. Okay. Anything, anything else on that proposal? No, my only thought is I'm kind of floating them out of my mind here is that the challenge with Toby is that there's an awful lot of privately held yeah. land right. up there. Exactly. And private landowners don't get as excited about having everybody accessible to Toby. Right. Because they go up and trash their property, which if you go up there already, yeah. happens all the time. Mm. And so there's a downside to this. Right. And, um, you know, there's obviously state land as you get over towards the other side, over near Reservation Road. But this all, this side, including the parcel that we talked about earlier, is all privately held. Right. And, um, well, it's not all. It's like a patchwork. It's a patchwork. Yeah, it's a, yeah it is a patchwork for sure. Yeah. But there's a fair amount. Of, some of those roads are right. predominantly right. privately mm. held. And so there is kind of a the other side of this. Yeah, um, we're aware of that. Yeah. So, you know, it's everything's always. Yeah, and even the Conservation Commission had years ago kiosks at different places, and they've been trashed and turned into firewood and right. spray painted. They, so we gave up on them. Mm. The only one that's still there is the one at Reservation Road, even the one at the top of the mountain. Not looking mm. so good. Mm -hmm. I mean, those roads are still public roads. And yeah. So. Right. Yeah. So we start with what is public and accessible to everyone. And, and, and also. There are towns, you know, like Asheville, that have been super active in terms of their trail trailblazing and have gotten, um, concept, you know, they've gotten easements from a lot of people. They right. have an incredible system now. Right. And right. I would say that there, there's a, yes, there are things that get trashed, but sometimes when you organize better, you also get a well, cadre of people who take right. care of things. Right. I mean, for example, right. even on our Riverside pathway, I've seen somebody with like a little, a little lawnmower cart, like going around picking up whatever trash yep. was yep. there from, you know, I mean, so people care and, you know, when you make it a, you know, yeah, no, I think that it, it may lead to a greater good by having more people accessible and getting some of the other activities that occur up there maybe under control. So, Well, part of this grant includes two public forums, cause, and Carlos is really good at that. He's really good at receiving public input, and we, it, you know, we, we've been at this long enough to know that we need to kind of have conversations with right, all the stakeholders, right. including right. the private lender, and gather all the needs. I know the water district has feelings also about what they want right, to happen right, at the right. gateway. So we would be like, you know, gathering as much of, of all those different needs as possible and incorporating them into. Yeah. Any other? So we'll ch I'll change it to um, 11, uh, you know, and change that in the proposal and resubmit it. Okay.
One more. <laughs> the, um, the really short one. This is, yeah, it's really <laughs> short. Um, so, and um, again, full disclosure, I wrote this one. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the town of Sunderland, because Jeff wasn't here yet, and we're so happy Jeff is here. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping it gets rescinded. What? The interest, right? Oh. To pay for the interest, that one? Rescinded. Okay, wait a minute. Let me back up. Back up. Jennifer and I were approached by the town accountant saying, you have to pay um, whatever this... It, I wasn't it's... on the committee then. I'm not. I'm not forking it over. <laughs> you. Are. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that that no. That when they the Riverside right. Park project was done with a state grant, a park grant right. that's that's done, given on a reimbursement basis. Right. So the town has to pay for the construction, yeah. and then we get reimbursed sixty eight percent. So the town borrowed money. To so the it. town borrowed money. We, so we nobody we asked 600, us. Six hundred thousand plus sitting in the CPA funds. Right. We had to borrow money. I right. don't understand that. Right. We don't understand it. And and like oh. I said, the accounting <laughs> process is like the triple black diamond um, <laughs> of all of this. It's very difficult. I said, oh, let's pay it out of our administrative account because we have six thousand in our administrative account that we never spend. And he said, oh no, 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 you can't do that. So, um, and we have we have a little remaining balance um, from a park project, but those funds are for um, earmarked. That they were for benches that were and plants that were in our budget already. You know, so we don't want to we don't want to give away the fun stuff. <laughs> to pay mm -hmm. this interest that wasn't in our budget originally and mm -hmm. wasn't, you know. So anyway, that's why we're coming to, uh, we figure this way the town only pays 50 cents on the dollar for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, right, absolutely. So, any, any questions on that one? That sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah. And we'll be giving back all those administrative funds, <laughs> so. We only spent like 1100 yeah. out of the 6000 I guess that, that, that does raise the question, are there any of the, are there any of the projects that have been submitted this year that are likely to have interest expenses and should those be included now? There's no, none of these are, none of these involve borrowing. Reimbursable grants, right? No, no, are they any reimbursements or they're no. all just, no, okay. So, yeah, we ought to pay that. That's just, you know. Well, it's already been paid. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> we ought to reimburse the other account. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Great. Well, I still don't know why it's so much, but I just, yeah, I just. That's the other thing. One month it's, of borrowing. Woo. Yeah, it's like two months. It's like one percent for two months. It's, and There's it's probably a lot of legal paperwork involved in that. No, we paid the legal. Oh, you did. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyway. All right. Any other questions <laughs> about that one? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well. Um, I think that we're done as, unless anybody has anything else to cut. So we meet again March 11th, 7 p.m. And um, any proposal revisions are due on March 9th. Um, so we, and, and then at our March 11th meeting, we'll vote on um, what's, what we want to move forward to town meeting of all these six. And, um, and Jennifer will do the um, warrant. Is it that meeting? Or the That's our only meeting, meeting before. No. Before town meeting? Oh, you write the warrant? Article? I guess I'll do with that. You write them? Free, right? Samples? <laughs> huh? Based on last year. Okay. <laughs> Just change a couple words. Just substitute the words. And then we authorize her to work with the town administrator yeah. to finalize, right. finalize them with legal, legal counsel. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's always contingent on the town accountant and town council. Yeah. Whatever we vote on. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, everybody, for Thank coming. You. Thank you for your proposals. I'm moving Thank adjourned. For, yes. Any, or, or is it, what do you say, by acclamation? What? Or is it un, not debatable? Or do we have to vote on adjourning? <laughs> Move to close second. the hearing. Second. Right. Motion. I'm second. 845. Right. Okay, she's closing the hearing. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank right. you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes.